I'm in Sedona, and uh, I'm walking through the streets. Sedona is the most beautiful place I've ever been, but uh, it's also like you know, there's a lot of new age there. In fact, let me back up. When I, when I first drove into Sedona, as soon as I got to the edge of the town, you know, where all this occurs, I started getting pain in my neck. You know, it was like I was like, oh no, you don't. You know, I knew what it was immediately. It's like you know, the devil trying to attack me. So I was like, no, no, get out. Every, every one of you evil spirits, get out of here in the name of Jesus. I'm taking authority over this town right now in Jesus' name. And it went away, you know, and, uh, and I, wasn't, I wasn't attacked at all the rest of the day. In fact, something really cool happened, which is what I'm going to tell you now. You know, so uh, I'm walking along 89A, which is like the main drag. You got 179, and it turns, and then you turn off into 89A, and, the, you know, most of the shops and all the stores and stuff are right there. In uh, you know, in the beautiful mountains all around, and so like I'm walking along, and there's this guy uh, gets my attention in in, in this oh, the Oak Creek Marketplace, all right, and he gets my attention. It's like an open door, like it's not like a door. It's like an open air type thing that goes into the store. You know, there's no it doesn't seem to be no doors there, and uh, so like I I he gets my attention. I go up to him, and he's like a tourist type guy, he, well, his name is Shay, and he, 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 he shows you the maps of the area and tells you about all the area, you know, what's going on in Sedona and all, and uh, I'm talking to him, and I can tell he needs the Lord, and there's another guy that's standing right in, in, behind another little area next near him that I guess a co-worker his, his name is Todd, you know, and uh, they're talking to me about the area, and, and I forgot really how the conversation came up, but I, you know, I led the conversation in the direction of this, you know, the spiritual stuff, you know, and to talk about Jesus, and I told him what I do, you know, and uh, and how I'm a minister, and you know, I pray for people, and then and then it turns out that Todd is a Christian, and he goes to me, he says, he says, well, you know, it's like some people have the gift of healing, you know, and uh, you know, and it's and it's be all the things, and but then immediately I was like, okay. You know, he's, he's got, you know, he's a nice guy, I believe, he, he believes and all, but he's got, you know, I think he needs his understanding to be tweaked here a little bit, you know, and, I, and so I started talking to him and Shay, who was standing right next to me, and I started talking to him about, uh, well, you know, it's like, uh, it depends on your perspective and how you're reading, how you're reading about the gifts, you know, like, like in Corinth, in 1 Corinthians it talks about the gifts, like, you know, one, you know, some have, you know, one has a gift, gift of healing, you know, gift of prophecy, gift of tongues, whatever, you know, and, uh, and I said, you know, uh, it's, it, it, it's, you got to read it a certain way, you know, because you, you have to read it a certain way in order for other scriptures to support the way you're reading it, because when you're, when you're trying, when you're developing doctrine, you have to look at the preponderance of scripture, all of scripture before you come up with a conclusion of what the scripture actually is saying, you know, like, so a lot of Christians will think that I, you know, I have a gift of healing, you know, God gave me the gift of healing. And so like, I got it, you know, not everybody has it, you know, but the way I read first Corinthians with the gifts in the church is that it says, you know, like, as like, for instance, with the gift of healing, uh, it's like, if you need healing, I have a gift for you. It's called healing. You get it? It's like it's like for me to give you the gift that you, you it, it's a gift and it's called healing because you need healing in your body. That's the way I read it, you know, like, like pro, the gift of prophecy. You know, it's like it's like I don't have this gift of prophecy where like I prophesy. You know, it's like it, it's if if God has a word for you, then I have a gift for you. It's a prophetic word because you need you know God has this. God has this gift for you. It's a prophetic word. So here it is. I speak it over you, right? So that's the way I read it, and it's like, and you have to read it that way, really, because because there's other scriptures, like I said, that, you know, Mark Mark 16, right, where it says believers will lay hands on the sick and they will recover, so that, that means all believers, you know, so like, so if the gifts are just for certain few, that doesn't jive, so to speak, with the Mark 16 verse, so... So, you know, and also, you know, John 14, 12, where Jesus says, uh, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. It says anyone. It doesn't say specifically those with gifts of healing. You know, so like, so you've got to read 1 Corinthians the right way in order for it to match with other scriptures in the Word of God. Because you've got to look at the preponderance of scripture, right? You have to look at it that way. <clears throat> you know, so... uh so anyway, I'm explaining this to Todd and Shay, and uh, you know because 
<clears throat> and the word also says that God confirms his word with signs that accompany it. All right? So God wants the truth to be accurately taught. <clears throat> you know, we're, we're, excuse me, I was just eating Doritos. We're supposed to know the truth accurately. We're supposed to rightly divide the word of truth. And so, and God, <clears throat> excuse me. And God wants that to be the case. So so after I was explaining these things to Todd, and Shay was listening like, like, you know, because he's, he's, he needs to get saved. And so like, it was all new to him, you know. And uh, I said, now, I'm going to show you right now that what I'm saying is true. Because, because before I said that, I got a word of knowledge concerning Todd. Like, I felt like, like, uh, like electricity going through my mouth. Like as if, like as if, the Holy Spirit had touched my the nerve in my mouth, and so like I had shooting pain. It wasn't like pain, like ouch, that hurts. It was just like a a taste of something going on in my mouth, of like what it would be like if if I had nerves that were pressing and causing pain, whatever. And so I said that I said to Todd, I said I'm gonna show, I'm gonna prove my point right, right now. You've got pain in your mouth, and he goes, Yeah, you're right, I do. I just had a tooth pulled. And I couldn't tell by looking at him. His tooth wasn't swollen, you know, so I wasn't using my natural eyes to determine that. He, he wasn't talking in a slur. Rah, rah, rah. His mouth wasn't swollen, but he did say, yes, I just had a tooth pulled, and I've got a lot of pain in my mouth right now. So, uh, you know, so of course it went away. You know, God gave me a word of knowledge right there, so it went away. I probably spoke, I spoke, and it went away. So I said to him, okay, now that's, so now here's my point. There's two gifts that were, in, that were just in the play there, the word of knowledge, and healing, you know, and it's like it, those, were, those were gifts for you. It was for you, Todd, you know. And then I said, in fact, in fact, there's going to be a third gift in coming into into play right now. Also, the gift of prophecy. I prophesy to you, Todd, that the Lord wants to use you this way because you understand you're receiving this not in a condemning way. It's not you're not like receiving this like like I'm trying to prove you wrong. You know, you were receiving it humbly. You you believe in in uh, you know. And, and so I believe God wants to use you this way. So I, sp I speak that over you, that God's going to use you in healing. You know, freely you have received, freely give. You know, and so like it was an amazing situation. God confirms his words with signs that accompany it. So like, so like if you're talking with people, if you're in a conversation with people and, and uh, other Christians and, and uh, they're saying something, they're, do they're teaching something that you know is not accurate, then watch for an opportunity from God for God to, Prove his word accurate. You know, God may give you a word of knowledge or like he'll, you know, in, in a sign, a sign, right? To prove what his word is actually saying, you know? So so I thought it was an interesting situation there. And, and the other kid, Shay, I mean, he didn't he didn't get saved because I didn't really, actually, I didn't really feel led to lead him to the Lord. He was into the spiritualism and all. And, uh, I, you know, but it was definitely a witness to him. I said to him, I said, I can tell you're into the spiritualism. You don't believe. And he goes, that's right. And I said, but but the, you've never seen this before. This is a different thing. This is like you're seeing it witnessed, and and, uh, and it's like it's really an encouragement to you. And he goes, yeah, it is, without a doubt. You know, so like so like a seed was sown in that young man's heart. So so praise God. So like you know, when you get a chance, you can pray for Shay. He works in the, like I said, the Oak Creek Marketplace on 89A in Sedona. You know, and uh, pray that he gets saved.